This is the Be More Podcast. I am your host, Jack Williams, and this is a show all about health, nutrition, mindset, and performing at our very best. And this is going to be your catalyst to being more. Welcome, guys and girls, to episode 32 of the Be More Podcast. And I am excited, nervous, and a little bit apprehensive to do this podcast. So... A couple of weeks ago, if you are someone who follows my content, you will know that I made the decision that I no longer was going to drink alcohol. And it was a decision that you make after every night on the piss. You're like, I'm not drinking anymore. I feel horrendous. It's not worth it. So I woke up on a Sunday morning after a night out, actually a wedding, and um, I had a massive fat lip, having been headbutted by one of my best mates, (laughs) which has now, as a result, caused an issue between me and him that shouldn't really be an issue. Um, I also woke up with 180 quid less in my bank account than I had before I went to the party. I also woke up with a banging headache and all of that accumulated. I also felt shit the next day after that and the day after that. And well, we're three weeks later now and I still am not talking properly to one of my best mates and it was a massive misunderstanding and it's all issues that are caused because of alcohol now I'm not someone who's ever really enjoyed the taste of alcohol I've always just drunk it and binge drunk it as a I, I was I think I've just fallen into and been conditioned into thinking that it was the right thing to do to have fun that the more alcohol you drink, the more fun you have. And that's what I've been... We've all brought, we're all brought up into a world where we believe that, right? And I, from the age of about 16, 17, have spent most weekends pissed at my head. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, between 16 to 21, maybe, throughout college and university. And then start running my own business, and I'd start drinking a little bit less, and it would only be a Saturday night after football that I'd just get hammered. And again, it would just my weekends would be shit. And that was about two years and it would ruin my training. And then I did a little bit of intense training and stopped drinking for quite a long period. And now recently it's become more of a social thing and I've got become a big fan of gym. And yeah, what I've just found though is that I didn't really like the taste of gin that much. It would just taste a lot better than the rest of the drink. I, I didn't really drink beer much because it got to a point where I, yeah, I just didn't enjoy the taste. It bloated me out. But I'd have a few just to, just to fit in with everyone else and then I'd move on to gin. And then it was to the point now where I just had gin straight away from the off and I just get completely smashed. And yeah, but I'm not saying I never had fun when I was under the influence of alcohol, but what I'm saying is the situation is what made me have fun and not the alcohol. So I basically decided, having woke up on that Sunday, I had to go and do, I, I went to a Herbalife event and there was 200 people in a room and I was recognised for doing really well. So I was brought to the front of the room and there I was trying to talk about how I'd, got from where I started to where I was where I am now and I'm stood there with a massive fat lip and um, a really bad hangover didn't look great and um, I just didn't it, did, it didn't feel right for me here I am trying to represent this be more brand about trying to be more in every aspect of life perform really well and I didn't feel like I was being more I wasn't really living true to the message that I was trying to send out and I wake up most days now almost grateful for the fact that my mate did stick his massive forehead on my mouth because it just woke me up into realising that I don't actually need to do that to have fun and I don't need to spend stupid money in a bar that, yeah, it's just, it woke me up into realising. I woke up the next day and me and Robin just said to each other, let's just stop drinking for a bit, Let's, let's try and focus on ourselves and like not waste money on stuff that we don't need and um made that decision so i then spoke to a few friends who have also decided to stop drinking in the last like five or six years and they said to me that they feel better than ever and i was just like i want to get to the bottom of this what have you done and they read a book and i'm reading it right now and it's called how kick the drink easily by jason vale and for me it's been awesome i'm not finished yet but it's been awesome and I'm on a stag do this weekend in Munich and I know that for a fact if I hadn't read this book 
I would be drinking it this weekend in Munich because you always say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick the drink and then it gets around to the next event and you're back on it again. And then the cycle continues. And this book has opened my eyes into so many things. And like my, my mind this year has been opened massively by so many different things and like alcohol and the way we're conditioned to think and how we're brainwashed in society to think that alcohol is what makes us have fun and it's something that you need to have a good night out and like if you go out a night out you're not drinking people automatically be like you're boring when I haven't done anything the only difference is I'm not having a drink like you are I could be having more fun than anyone else and I could be having more of a laugh than anyone else and people would regardless of how I was being they would automatically think he's boring because he's not drinking alcohol and I, I've always been scared of that. I'm not going to lie to that. I've always feared like people judging me in, in a way that I don't want to be boring. And it would just make my life a lot easier if I just do what everyone else is because then I'll just fit in. And it's got to the point now where I don't want to do that. And I'm trying to not worry. Like I've always said, it's, it's obviously a process, but just not worrying what other people think is, is it makes you so free. And, um, for a long time, I haven't really enjoyed alcohol that much. I just enjoy the experience with my friends and went with my with my family at occasions when you do go and, and celebrate whatever it might be or you go for a night out. And in order for me to fit in, I'd have to drink to fit in. Whereas now I'm going to go and do all those things still. Like I'm not going to stop going out because I'm not drinking. This is the reason why people who stop drinking don't can't sustain it. It's like people when they go on a diet, they say, oh, I'm not going to eat chocolate. There's, a, there's an end point to that because you're still you're going to want to eat chocolate eventually it's just the removal of things like if I remove socialising from my life I'm going to miss the, the alcohol aspect because it, it, I'm assigning that to the socialising right whereas if I still socialise still go out and have a great time my plan in Munich's weekend is to have a great time come back without a massive hangover and just continue with my life and actually see the culture in Munich and actually get to see a bit of Germany maybe do a few whatever it might be some sightseeing early in the morning when everyone else is hanging out their ass, and there'll be a few that probably want to try and come with me but yeah so I'm, 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 there's a bit in this book that I'd, I want to share with you lot like I don't want to preach I'm not trying to tell people you just stop drinking I'm just using this podcast as a, as a channel to try and help people to be more in any area of their life and if they feel like they've got if they're like me and they don't really enjoy it that much or they want to really focus on the goals they've got set and alcohol is holding them back because I was finding that if I was drunk on a Saturday night every Sunday I'd be useless Saturday evening obviously I'd be useless so there would be a large chunk in my week every week and even the Monday morning I wouldn't be nowhere near as productive where, where as a result my business my training my health was suffering because of putting this stuff into my body every weekend just because I yeah I, I fell into society's like way of how you live life it's just monday to friday you graft you work hard especially in the uk the culture is work hard monday to friday at the weekend you celebrate you, you celebrate for working hard or you go get smashed you eat you binge eat you eat loads of rubbish and i've always been a massive like advocate of saying this isn't what you should do you should have balance you shouldn't need to do that and then there was me still going out and getting smashed on gin all the time and even if i was having a night in with robin we just we'd do a bottle of the gin wake up the next day feeling horrendous and then we compared that Sunday to waking up Sunday just gone where we woke up nice and early we went for a run um, had a nice healthy breakfast together worked through some goal setting for the next 13 weeks where we used the best self journals and we just felt amazing by 11 we went for cake together and we, we had a great day and it wasn't under the influence of alcohol and we just had a complete clear mind we got excited about the goals we were setting and then we had time to go and do things together as well as all of the goal setting stuff because we did all that stuff, right? And we didn't wake up with anxiety because alcohol makes me super anxious. It also makes me feel a little bit down the next day. I woke up feeling bright as a daisy, went for a run, like endorphins were through the roof. And this is how you should feel, right? And this is how I want to feel. I don't want to feel like I'm mentally not 100% because of a drink that I didn't actually like the taste of that much like before. We're just conditioned into thinking that it's a good thing. That's how you have more fun. And that's what you should do as a couple. You should let your hair down and have a drink. But I would have rather watched a movie without it 
and woke up the next day and had a great day. You know, I didn't want to waste the day. And I, I could have had a drink that tasted super nice that I like the taste of, and that didn't give me all the side effects that alcohol gives me. And yeah, basically Jason Vale is the author of this book. He's really, really good. Um, he's just such a practical author, easy to read. And yeah, you, you'll, you'll read this book and you'll think, that's really interesting and it'll open your mind into the way society leads us to believe that alcohol is something that is a good thing and not something that, like if you tried introducing alcohol into the world now, there's a good chance that it wouldn't actually stick because of the, all the disadvantages I'm going to read to you now. But we're conditioned and brainwashed into believing that it's a good thing simply because it's a massive financial like machine that the government has in place. And um, I'll get to that in a sec. I'm trying to make this, this podcast nice and short. I'm going to read out these disadvantages. And then, yeah, I, I'll, um, I'll I'll wait to hear what everyone's judgments are. Like, oh, Jack's boring now. You don't drink anymore. But, um, yeah, be open-minded and have a listen. Um, it's just crazy, I think, that I'll do a podcast on um, drinking alcohol and why it's bad for you. And that'll go down like, everyone will be like, what, Jack's boring and then I'll do a post or, or a video about how I'm doing Herbalife and I'm trying to help people positively with their health. And everyone will also be like, oh, what? Do you know what I mean? Like, the, you, I'm trying to help people and then I'm trying to help people in th- another way. And it's just, yeah, it's, we're just conditioned into thinking a certain way. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing for me. And, it, and I didn't really realize it massively until reading this book and it's massively opened my mind into the way alcohol is positioned to us from a young age and how we're conditioned into thinking a certain way. And um, I don't really want to be part of the system. I don't like the whole that, that whole thing. And I, and I was ignoring the fact that alcohol is a huge part of that. Um, so here are the disadvantages. A drug comes in liquid, the drug comes in liquid form, which is a result of a process of decay. It tastes disgusting. It is very addictive. And the chances are that you remain hooked for the rest of your life. It will cost you at least 100,000 in your lifetime. Mental. It is a powerful poison. Every fix will destroy thousands of your brain cells. It will dehydrate your brain, your body so much that the day after inviting, it will, it will, your brain will have shrunk. It will dull all your senses. It will stupefy you. I don't need that. I'm stupid enough as it is. You will not be able to hold normal conversations. It will slow down your reactions. It will impair your ability to communicate effectively and efficiently. It will slur your speech. It will remove your natural fears, making you vulnerable and completely unprotected. It will remove the safety checkpoint between your brain, brain and mouth and you will blurt out whatever comes into your head, no matter how stupid, defensive, obnoxious, aggressive, rude or agent it might be. And that, that must have be what happened when I was pissed that night and my mate decided to land dead on me. I think I was getting rowdy, but I don't think it was that intense. But he was rowdy as well because he was under the influence of alcohol and he regretted it straight away. And I regretted whatever I was doing straight away and it's just a, a horrible situation. And we haven't even spoken properly since. There's been a few messages here and there. I'm like, you're all good, mate. But yeah, it's just ruined a, a, a relationship. I don't want that to happen, but I've got two dead teeth and it's cost me a lot of money to fix it. And none of these things would have happened, you know. We'll make up. I've got a golf ball that's soon. I've got a smash in. <laughs> it will create the illusion that you are now more confident and more courageous because you will lose your natural protection. Once you've experienced that illusion, you will become completely dependent on the drug and will not be able to enjoy yourself without it. Your body will quickly build up an immunity and tolerance, so you will need more and more to get the same illusory effect. The more you take, the more it drags you down. The more it drags you down, the more you take. It will destroy your courage. It will undermine your confidence. It will take away your self-respect. It will make you its slave for life. You will reach a stage where it drags you down so much that you end up despising yourself for being a slave to something that you eventually hate. And the list just goes on and on and on. And um, then it gets to the disadvantage of taking this new drug. Now the advantage is... Nothing at all, absolutely nothing, nil, zero, zilch. Now some people will listen to this and be like, oh, why are you trying to make us do something? Like, And I've got mates who completely love getting pissed. And for them, like, I'm never going to speak about the disadvantages. And I think you should carry on drinking. Like, If you completely enjoy it, just like someone saying to me, oh, you shouldn't go to exercise in the gym. I, I enjoy that. So you, you shouldn't really preach on what I should and shouldn't do. And that's why I'm not going to say to anyone, you shouldn't drink at this weekend in Munich. I'm going to be like, it's just my decision not to. I'm probably going to get a lot of banter. I can I can cope with it. I'll wake up each day feeling fresh. You ain't going to. And um, I, I'll enjoy it as much as you do, if not more, because I'm going to remember everything as a result as well. And you're going to forget everything because you're going to get too battered. Um, 
so yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit of insight. It's not me saying don't drink, it's me saying be massively self-aware about the fact that it might not be the best thing for you. And I know that if you're super keen on training, trying to reach like mental performance like highs as well, whereabouts where like you're trying to really move the needle from where you are to where you want to be in your life, it could be holding you back. But at the same time, it, if, it, if it's something that you enjoy doing, don't stop it. But just, I just ask the question is, is it the situation you enjoy or is it the actual drinking alcohol? Because I know for some of my mates, they just love getting out, being social, having banter with the lads, and that's the best part of a night. So if you look at like from seven pm when we get get together to about ten, it's the best part of a night. And then after ten, everyone's smashed. They cut the, the words are slurred, the banter goes downhill, and that's when the night gets starts to get a little bit boring and a little bit. You're out in a club, you can't hear anyone speak, and that's the bit that I don't really enjoy much. So, yeah, what bit's enjoyable for you? And when you're on the phone the next day thinking, oh, what happened last night? And then you speak about all the stuff you remember, and that was the stuff before the alcohol took over, more often than not. But there are, don't forget, there, there are funny times that alcohol does produce, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to forget those. But I can safely say that I won't drink again. And that book, Jason Vars' book on Kick the Drink Easily, has definitely been a massive influence in that. So I will tag the book below. I'm not being paid to advertise it. Um, but as a result of reading the book, Jason Vars got a few books on juicing. And he's got some like health and fitness and mindfulness retreats. I'm now intrigued to go on them because I, I simply like the way he writes and he, his message is getting across in a really good way. So as always, thanks very much for listening. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on this because, yeah, it's a topic I'm probably opening myself up to judgment for, for talking about. And um, I look forward to hearing what you lot think. And if you've someone who's quit drinking and the results you've seen, I'll be interested to hear. And... Likewise, if you're someone who does drink, don't think that automatically you can't relate to anything with me anymore and you can't listen to my content or I can't help you because I do, I'm do. i not trying to get you to quit. I'm just trying to tell you my story and how hopefully it might influence someone in a positive way. So yeah, it is like 5.20 in the morning. I'm going to go have some breakfast and then start work in about 40 minutes. So yeah, none of these things could have happened if I was under the influence of alcohol. That's for sure. Even if you might think I do sound pissed. <laughs> right. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode. I'll let you know how Munich goes. See you soon. Take care.